Welcome to today's video. This video is the first video of a lecture series on performing genome-wide analysis. But before that, first let me tell you what is genome-wide analysis, what type of figures we mostly have, and how we can make them and how we can understand and interpret them. So let's begin. Let's first try to understand what is genome-wide analysis. So we will extract the definition of genome-wide analysis from these words. Here you can see the genome-wide. It means the whole of genome. Whole of genome. So we can take any example for genome like we can take from plants, we can take from animals. So let's suppose the cell of rice consists of 36,000 genes. as the whole genome of rice contains 36,000 genes, although it may vary from varieties to varieties. But if there are totally 36,000 genes and almost there are 15,000 families, it means these all 36,000 genes belongs to different 15,000 gene families. So what we need to do, if we want to count that how many number of genes belong to a specific family. So probably for one person it would be a difficult job. So what the people do, they only select the one family and try to find how many number of genes belong to this specific family. Let's suppose in this example we can say how many number of genes belong to the actin family. Similarly, we can try to find how many number of genes are present in the rice genome which belong to subtilisian family. So similarly people try to make efforts to characterize the genes belong to a special family then they try to find the similar gene structure and the protein structure. So what would it would be the genome wide analysis what we do we try to count all the genes belonging to a specific family in whole of any particular genome so this that is why the genome wide analysis is also known as genome wide characterization so we also called as genome wide characterization but try to remember this that uh, it is very different from the jivas that is genome wide association analysis so never call this as the jivas because jivas is something different which we will discuss in a separate video so you can also call genome wide analysis as genome wide characterization but you cannot call it as genome wide association so now let's first try to understand that how it works So uh, let's begin with the DNA. So we know that first the DNA is actually the double standard. So what is DNA? DNA is actually the gene. You know that in one gene there is one coding part and one is the non-coding part. Similarly, there is again coding part and again non-coding part. The coding part is called exon. Similarly, here the non-coding part is called intron. Similarly, again if it is coding, so it would be exon 2. Similarly, if there is non-coding part again, so it would be intron 2. So when there is formation of messenger RNA, so we know that introns are supplies out. So th this exon 1 is connected with the E2. So this intron is actually the supplies out. So it will connect it with the E2 and finally messenger RNA will be formed. So here you can see when the messenger RNA is formed then it is translated into a protein. So as we know that protein is made up of amino acids and uh, different amino acids form a long polypeptide chain to form a protein. So if we further look up protein, so you will see there would be many domains like if protein, uh, let's suppose if 
a protein size is from 100 to 400 amino acids so might be the only the domain is only between like 200 to 300 so this specific part which may exist independent may be called as domain so domain have although th this is a separate topic which i will discuss in a separate video that what is the difference between specific domain or a specific motive but what you can try to remember that a domain can keep itself as a stable so entity th this is actually the scantry structure of the protein so here it would be called as domain so we actually perform genome wide analysis on the basis of these domains so actually let's suppose if this is a protein and uh, and the domain is only between 200 to 300 amino acid so that domain can be considered as the basic unit basic unit to perform genome wide association analysis so what we do we take this let's suppose this is actin domain so we will try to find this actin domain within the whole genome of rice and we will try to find how many among 36,000 genes how many number of genes have this specific domain so we will never search the whole sequence of the protein we will only search the domain that specific domain so now let's let me show you with the help of diagrams here you can see uh, let me first clear this screen here you can see we have the, actually the gene and here is the coding part exon 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 and exons so what we do during the messenger rna actually these this the red part which are introns which i have already explained these introns are spliced out and this blue part is just mixed together and form a messenger rna which is converted into amino acid chain to form the final structure of protein so what we will use as a sequence to start our genome wide analysis study so we will actually even go more deep you can see this is the example of a human bromo domain so here you can see this is actually the long domain having many domains this protein have many domains among them you can see this is the bromo domain one this is bromo domain two similarly this is et this is HAT. these are the different domains so what we will take as a basic unit so if we want to characterize the bromo domain genome wide analysis so we will only take this small domain as our searching path so we will search only the sequence of these amino acid which are only within this domain and try to search within the whole genome that how many number of genes how many number of genes are present in the rice genome while moving next here are the some example of genome wide analysis often you have seen many research articles which are published based on the studies of genome wide analysis so let me show you that how you can also uh, design your study based on these examples so here you can see genome wide analysis of lbt family so it means in this family we will only search lbd domain in the rice so here is next example you can see the genome wide analysis of similar to rcd1 family in popular so what we will do we will take the popular genome and we will try to find sro family domain and uh, we will check how many number of domain how many number of genes are there so similarly we can take few more examples here you can see genome wide analysis of aquaporin gene so you can take any of your gene and try to characterize that how we can find uh, similarly here you can see uh, the next example 
genome-wide analysis of bromo domain gene family in arabidopsis and rice so it is good to compare your genome-wide analysis studies at a time in two plants here you can see because in the monocots the model plant is rice and similarly in the dicots the model plant is arabidopsis so at a time if you are conducting your genome wide analysis in monocart so you can take arabidopsis as model plant so next is how to perform genome wide analysis so there are the simple steps first what we will do we will identify the number of genes which contain bromo domain in arabidopsis thaliana and Araza sativa genome databases and similarly when, then we will do the in silico analysis what is in silico in silico mean through computers like which we perform through computational methods computational methods are simply you can also called as bioinformatics So in silico analysis of characteristics of genes, I mean, let's suppose you find 22 genes or 30, 30 genes, then you need to find that uh, among these 22 or among these 30 genes, uh, what were the length of their genes, what were the length of messenger RNA, what was the length of their proteins. Similarly, then we perform in silico analysis of the promoter structure so let's suppose this is your gene as we know this uh, is the start of gene which is usually with the a at atg and the every gene ends with the tga that is the stop codon so atg actually start for methionine methionine is am amino acid so you should remember that every protein starts with the methionine and there is a stop signal which is TGA or maybe TAG or, or TAA. These three codons can be used at the stop codon. So we will perform the promoter structure. So this before here you can see the actually the gene is starting from ATG. So what uh, let me change its color if gene is starting from here the upstream of this gene like here 250 then 500 similarly 1000 and uh, 2000 2000 base pair upstream upstream of the start codon is considered as the promoter so we also try to find what are those domains which are located the upstream of the promoter because it may also affect the final expression of your gene. So similarly, uh, we can then in silico analysis of conserved domain. So what are those domains which are present in the promoter and what are those domains which are present within the main body of the gene? So uh, then we perform the multiple sequence alignment and the phylogenetic analysis. So uh, here is uh, one example and in this example I will show you that how we can compare the gene structure of BRD genes from Arabidopsis and rice. So uh, what we will do, we will take just that bromo domain. Actually, bromo domain consists of only 110 amino acids. So we will try to find the sequence. What we will do, we will take the sequence of those 110 amino acids and we will try to search that through the different databases like NCBI. Similarly, like we can take from plaza monocot or plaza dicot and gramine database so we will take different databases and try to search this sequence and blast this sequence that how many number of genes come through and then we will try to find the gene structure through the different bioinformatic analysis and different websites and similarly we can also use the tb tool to find the gene structure and further on here you can see 
the result of the gene structure you can present in the form of this uh, let me clear this so here you can see here we have the genes from the Arabidopsis and here we have genes from the Oraeza sativa AT stand for Arabidopsis thaliana and similarly OS stand for Oraeza sativa so here you can see we have the singleton groups and similarly we have orthologous groups 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 to 15 so actually we have these 15 orthologous groups it means uh, they the sequence of these 15 orthologous groups are similar and they are uh, performing the same function as in Arabidopsis as in the or as a sativa so if we you see you can see we can start the numbering here is the singleton group so you can ignore this one you can start from the orthologous group here you can see the first gene we have like the 1a similarly 1b 1c so here you can see here we have in the orthologous group 1 from Arabidopsis we have 1 2 3 4 genes in the Rabidopsis, we have actually the four genes. But if in the orthologous group one, in the Oraza sativa, there is only one gene. So actually, the, this is the same gene, but this same gene has many transcript. As we previously studied, that different exons form together. Sometime exon one, exon two, and exon three can make similarly only exon 1 and exon 3 can make combination to form final similarly e1 and e2 can also form a new protein so here you can see this is the arabidopsis bromo domain 1 a b c d actually these are the transcript of one gene so they should be considered as only one gene so here number two uh, you can see in arabidopsis there are multiple splicing product so you can see we have again four and here we have only two so you can make a fine comparison to this structure and here uh, to understand more if you see uh, here is one green color the green color is showing the coding region and coding region we know that that it is exon maybe exon one exon two exon three so in most of the genome white paper you would often see that uh, there is the structure in the form of the exon and here in orange color you can see these are actually if this is the gene here is the 5 UTR 5 prime untranslated region and similarly on the second end we have the 3 prime UTR so in this way you can also uh, present your data in a comparison so in the later on videos I will take one example and show you step by step that how we can perform this search and how we can make uh, a fine comparison of two model crops and through different tools and databases so the next important figure is the comparison of domain architecture because the previous uh, structure was based on the DNA I mean the DNA or the gene structure because the gene has the exon or intron so now we will try to find the comparison of domain architecture and we know that domain where we know that domains are present in protein so we can see uh, we can here you can see there are the different groups orthologous one group two three and and uh, if you see only look at the first one arabidopsis da1 there are the different color and here are you can see we have different domain in the yellow color we have atpase brd et and similarly this color you can see the first one is actually this wot40 and next is the blue one the blue one is brd d domain and next is again this silver color so silver is that wd40 and then there is red that is the zinger zinc finger domains and similarly i will show you that how you can find the domains of a protein and then you can make its structure with the help of tb tool and then we can just present them in the final structure and if you try to notice that here are the orthologous group and here are the paralogous group and we know that actually the orthologous groups have the same ancestor like i mean previously 
probably the Arabidopsis and Orazia sativa have the same ancestor of this genome and uh, but they were only present in the different species and they were doing the the same function but here uh, you can see the in the paralogous groups in it means that these genes might have evolved the, through the evolution might be there are some duplications or deletion in this genome they are performing the similar function but not the same function so in genome wide analysis this is important to study the domain architecture of uh, proteins if we move next the next is the diversity of cis regulatory elements in the upstream region and as i have previously told if this is the start of gene the 2000 base pair upstream would be called as the promoter region so actually the cis regulatory elements uh, are present in the promoter region so actually the cis regulatory elements are the attachment site of the different transcription factor where uh, many other proteins can bind to initiate the final function so probably like here if we see dofcom this is a uh, dofcom this is actually a cis regulatory element which invite the phosphorus regulatory transcription factor so it mean it may also help us to understand the function of protein if we know the cis regulatory elements so let me show you through example here you can see the total number of elements uh, cis elements are up to almost 40 and uh, here are the singleton groups then we have orthologous groups then we have paralogous groups and uh, you can see this one belongs to the Arabidopsis thaliana and this figure belongs to the Orasa sativa and here you can see th this first color is showing the light responsive elements so what it shows it means this family of the protein as it has the cis uh, cis regulatory element of light response so it means it is predicting that this family is might be involved in the light response and similarly if we go ahead then there is the abiotic stress controlling cis regulatory elements so from here we can predict the function of this protein so that is why this uh, analysis is called genome wide characterization that we cannot uh, say that this uh, particular protein has has this function but as a journal we can characterize this that this family might be involved although we know that to check any protein functional we have to perform knockout or we have to perform complementation but at least from here we can know that uh, what uh, functions can be characterized and what functions can be linked to this family of proteins and if we uh, look at this third number here you can see the biotic stresses similarly the phytohormones so from here we can judge that bromo domain are actually involved in the epigenetic mechanism because th they are mostly their expression is mostly altered through the environment so they are involved in the epigenetic environment so next is the phylogenetic tree based uh, on the bromo domain of arabidopsis thaliana and uh, or as a sativa so what we will do wh whatever the number of those genes we have collected let's suppose uh, 22 from 1 I mean the Arabidopsis thaliana and 30 in rice so what we will do we will try to characterize all those genes into the different groups how we will characterize as there are many separate videos uploaded that how we can perform the phylogenetic tree and how we can perform their alignment so uh, we will later uh, do this path one by one as well so here you can see this is actually the phylogenetic tree here you can see we have orthologous group 4 which has this group and similarly we actually perform this phylogenetic 
analysis with the help of mega software or cluster we you we will use this these two software to perform the phylogenetic tree and here if you try to look here are the specific numbers which are actually the bootstrap percentage bootstrap percentage and if you try to look there are majorly two categories one is here you can see the one branch is divided into two and then this is further divided into two so it means those proteins which are together they they are in the one group so it means they are more similar as compared to if if we, it means that OG4 orthologous group number 4 is very different than the orthologous group as they are it means OG4 is more similar to PG1 and PG2 so similarly if we try to look ST1 is more similar to OG9 so as they are placed together it means they are more similar it means their sequence is more similar it means their function is more similar so if we try to make it through the grouping so what we will know these there are the different groups like uh, here you can see one two three this is the one this is two this is three similarly here is four and five six and seven yeah here is five and uh, here is six and uh, here is seven so actually if we divide all these groups based on their sequence so we will have the seven groups so within these groups the you can see their sequence would be similar and here you can see all those genes whether it is belonging to arabidopsis whether it is belonging to rice they will be placed in the one group because their sequence is more similar and here you can see this group which is some number seven it is having minimum number of genes it means these genes have more similar to sequence together so hopefully uh, now you have an idea that what is genome wide analysis and in the later on video i will tell you how we can perform by ourselves using different software and databases if you have still any question in understanding of the genome wide analysis please let me know in the comment section thank you for watching bye bye